Welcome to Be Bold Branding, where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Today's guest has built a brand that's known for helping you showcase yours through the power of video. He's going to share his story, exactly who he helps, and why he does what he does. I'm Tanya Everhart, founder of Brandface. We help business stars differentiate themselves, and we do that through personal branding. Hey guys, I'm Michael Carr. I'm the COO of Brandface. You know, I, I became a Brandface client almost eight years ago, and the principles made my company so successful that I became a partner in the company to help other entrepreneurs just like yourself become as successful as my company continues to be. We're the most comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe. Now we do be bold to help other people get the fear out of putting themselves out there. And we've got an incredible guest for you today. Mike Cuervas is joining us, the real estate marketing dude. He's definitely a leader and putting himself out there. We'd like to welcome you to the show. Mike. Hello, hello. And thank you guys for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I've uh, Likewise, I've seen a lot about you guys. I've seen your brand face all over the place. Um, so yeah, interesting to see where this conversation takes us today. Oh, yeah. We, we have lots of questions for you because <laughs> you have a really good, solid brand. You're known as the real estate marketing dude. And you help people with, I think, one of the most exciting things. And yet for a lot of people, st still one of the most scary things <laughs> about know. marketing, which is doing video. So Let's start by telling us how you got started in this. Was there a specific event or person in your life that kind of led you in this direction? Um, not really. I just knew I had to do something different. And the real estate industry is so stale. This just seemed like a giant opportunity um, to do so. But um, to fast track or to rewind a little bit, uh, I'm in San Diego now, but I sold real estate for 17, 18 years. Since 2002, I had my license. So towards the tail end, we weren't really heavy in the short sales. 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then they started to fizzle out. But throughout my career, or whatever it's been, 15 to 20 years, I've always done something different. Um, when I first started in real estate, I was only 22 years old. So at that time, I called myself Shy Town Mike. And I had this spiky hair. I was like this cool little young kid, right? And I was trying to roll with that. And new construction was the, was the hot topic at that time. We were, so, we were pre-selling condo, like a 500 unit condo building. We'd sell it out in a weekend because people were pre-buying construction and Shy town Mike was like that new construction guy. And then everyone's pants fell off in 2007 and everyone got kicked in the behind. And then I went into short sales really hardcore. We rebranded Chicagoland short sales redefined. We had one of the top short sale teams in the country, closing 30, 35 deals a month. And then that fizzled out. And I went too deep in the short sales and it took forever to rebuild my brand back. So everyone always just thought he did short sales. And I started realizing, holy shit, that was a brand. Now I'm the Chicago short sale guy. And then I'm like, shit, what do I do now? So I decided to turn into a cartoon. And that's when Chicago real estate dude was born. And then that led to real estate marketing dude and all that. But point of the story is, is that there's always a brand. The only thing that changed with mine was the business I did and the people I surrounded myself with. So I say it quite often, people are like, hey, I want to go sell more houses or higher priced houses. I'm like, well, go start hanging out with people who live in them because that's where most of the business is going to come from and not off a of lead generation source. So your brand is everything, folks. That's what we're here to talk about today. That's so true. And that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> okay. No, it is so true, man. I love that too. Like, And in fact, that you have actually been through Three brands, four brands, really, to, to get to that identity now that you have uh, is actually incredible. But to have got that concept early on, I mean, I love Shy town Mike, man. That's uh, <laughs> I do, I do too. the, the uh, well, I mean, you got to have a lot of fun. Like the thing is that um, you have to do something differently. Otherwise, you're just not top of mind. So here's I'll, I'll tell the story. I say this a lot on my show as well. Um, I was drinking beer on a Thursday with my best friend and I was 22 years old. I just got out of college. I actually just drove past this place yesterday. I'm in Chicago right now. And it was playing tourists in the city yesterday. And the name of the bar is called schoolyard tavern. So me and my friend, John are getting drunk on a Thursday for happy hour. Cause that's what 22 year olds, year olds uh, do. Right. Yeah. John, John proceeds to tell me, Oh yeah, I just, re I just referred this like smoking hot realtor, this $400,000 listing. I'm like, really? What does she look like? And then I'm like, wait, wait a second, John, you forgot what the hell I do for a living, dude. And I literally, he's like, Oh shit, bro. I'm sorry. I forgot you were in real estate. This is my best friend, mind you, that right. I see every day. We, at that time, we were drinking five days a week. So I'd see him, what, six days a week, right? Yeah. Um, 
and he even forgot I was in real estate that I paid my bill. Well, I put on credit because I didn't have any money back then. Um, and then I walked across the street. I didn't go out for six months because I realized that if my best friend forgot what the hell I did for real estate, how was anyone else going to? And I knew this was a referral dominated business. Um, and then I just worked hard on my brand. I started just marketing my own database, my friends, my family, because I knew everyone could introduce me to somebody. Mm-hmm. And everyone mm-hmm. today markets their networks and they market their brand to find now business. I market my brand to find referral business. Mm-hmm. And then I just happen to get lead business as a result of that. So it's just a lot of its mindset um, when you're starting off. Agreed, yeah. man. There's so much gold in what you just said. Uh, we teach it all the time. And, and in fact, yes. I too, like if you're in the real estate business for a minute, you know what it feels like to have, you know, probably your mother uh, refer some other realtor. You know what I mean? Because you were not top of mind awareness for some reason. And yep. if that isn't the perfect example of what realtors deal with every day, that I don't know what it is. And but no, everybody know, already knows I'm in real estate, Michael. What are you talking about? Right, Everyone knows what right. I do for a living. Like yeah. that's, I'm a realtor, damn it. I have a, I have a freaking bus stop bench out over on I-55. You didn't see that yet, bro? <laughs> that's why we say seriously this is the greatest setup in the world mike for breathe your brand mm-hmm. you know literally like it should be everywhere you should like go into a bar with your own coasters and just sit them down on the bar for everybody it's like real estate marketing yeah, yeah. yeah. here's like you, so i'll bar, g- you just you gave me a really good idea so here i okay. remember at the time i was shy town mike this is the type of marketing i was doing like just so my buddies owned a bunch of bars where obviously we're all young. So we know all the bar owners and everybody. And I was going to buy the space because he was the general manager at this place called Mickey's and Mickey's is a really popular bar. And I was going to buy the ad space above the urinal that said, don't piss your time away with another realtor. That was going to be my ad. And I knew it would have done something with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it, it was it, it fit shy town Mike perfectly. I was like, this is my this is where I, my audience is at. They're in this bar right here. That's where I got all my business is people I knew. Right. Um, and I would just meet people because I was chasing conversations. I wasn't chasing a bunch of leads. Mm, another good point. Another good nugget right yeah. there. Another nugget. <laughs> so true. I have a feeling we're going to run across a bunch of them mm-hmm. today, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So so let's shift back to, to like video for just a minute, because I know that's really what you help agents with. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what we want to focus on a little bit more is like, okay, how do you how do you get that brand out there through video? Yeah. I mean, um, video is a hot topic right now, but it's not that video generates leads. It generates attention, um, that generates conversations. Then you end up generating leads. People try to, um, Oh, I'm getting on video because my coach, you know, told me to get on video. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, and all the coaches are telling people, well, (laughs) this is the coaching advice, seriously. And I don't mean to step on anyone's toes, but most coaches are telling their, their, you know, their trainees to go out and do market reports and, I tell people like, hey, dude, do something cooler than a market report, like do something different. Everyone's doing the same shit like you have to differentiate. So a video builds your brand. It's a brand building thing. And that's the way you have to approach it. Otherwise, you if you approach it like a lead generating system, you're going to lose and you're going to get unmotivated and you're just going to quit. That's Mm -hmm. the truth of it. So what we have to understand is the difference between advertising and marketing. We have a bunch of salespeople in our profession running around with commission breath, breathing all over everybody, trying to like regurgitate. And all you're doing is v- word vomiting over everybody with your clear to close and your blah, 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 blah. Lenders are notorious at this, right? So, it's but so doesn't true. mean you stop yeah. talking to people. So the key is, is like reminding people, at least for me, reminding people what you do for a living. You don't have to hit them over the head with your calculator, or their lockbox. That's a turnoff, but you don't stop talking to them either. Right. True. So for video, you got to define the right way for you to do it. Um, what would that be? The cool thing is that you guys got to remember there's only one of you out there and that's that video persona or that story will be different for every single individual. That's the coolest thing about it. Um, but you have to figure out what the hell that is. Like we're on a podcast right now, right? This is a form of media. You guys have a podcast. I have a podcast. This is why we have a podcast is because our podcast brings sales but they don't bring sales because we're telling you guys to go buy our shit. We bring sales because we're giving you value and we're establishing a form of consistent communication with everybody. Mm -hmm. So when I take a video series, I pretend it's a podcast for a real estate agent and we just launch their show. The very first thing you'd have to do is name that show, Mm -hmm. right? A podcast sucks for a real estate agent to do. It's very tough. It's hard to get an audio audience locally, right? Right. 
But nationally, like which makes sense, like brand face, it makes sense for them to have a national podcast, it makes sense for real estate marketing dude to have a national podcast. To me, it doesn't make sense for a local agent or lender to have a podcast. It makes a lot of sense for them to have a video series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because their, their brand is their face. <laughs> yes. And a lot of right. the same topics that they would cover on a podcast that may potentially be national could still be covered on that. But a lot of there's going to be local, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's really what's so interesting about it. Um, that And two, you know, we've always felt like video is just the next best thing to being there. They sure. get to you see can. that personality and see who you are and, and hear some <laughs> of your story and just kind of get to know you. I cannot tell you, and I'm I'm certain it's happened to you as well. And anybody who does video consistently, the number of people that get on the phone with you or your team to talk to you about doing business. And one of the first things they say is, gosh, I feel like I already know you. I've watched so many of your videos. Mm-hmm. Otherwise they wouldn't have called you. You're right. Um, exactly. I had a call with someone today and he has a unique selling proposition. All right. He's a, he's a discount broker doing it at 1%. I mean, it's coming folks. Oh, all the realtors are always like, oh, oh, discount broker. Listen, he's got a USP. Um, This is what's happening. This is the truth. You have two ways to create a USP, I believe, in our business. Most of us just have it through our personal brand, which is why it's so important. People don't hire us because we have a license. That just gives you the right to collect money when you sell their house. They hire us because of how we sell their house, right? And that's what they also remember. But if you don't have like a unique selling proposition, because most realtors offer the same thing, your only unfair advantage is your personal brand. And that's what you have to, that's what you have to embrace. Like, and if you don't believe me, you uh, mentioned it earlier, there's every single year, a couple realtors lose uh, the, the listing to little cousin, Billy, who just got his license at prick. Um, that <laughs> asshole. Right. And they're like, Oh, my aunt's a bitch. No, she's not. It's not her job to remember what you do for a living. And her son, she has a better relationship with her son than she does with you. Right. It doesn't yeah. mean people don't like you. Right. It just means that they have a better relationship with somebody. Exactly. But exactly. equally as important as you could have stayed in touch. Well, when's the last time you called Aunt Susie at the same time? When's the last time you talked to her the mm-hmm. day before the closing five years ago? OK, well, that's the problem right there. Right. Yep. So oh, yeah. we have to establish a consistent communication with the people that are responsible for our business. Mm-hmm. And that's all we're doing. I farm with video. People farm with direct mail. I farm with video because with direct mail, I also like direct mail, but I like overlaying it with video. And the only difference is that my face is on it. It's mm-hmm. still a form of communication. It still creates an impact, but video is the most impactful form of communication because it contains all three elements of communication, which is body language, tonality, and face, period. Mm-hmm. You can't do that with any other form. That's why emojis are so popular in the last mm-hmm. five years because that expresses Emotion, you can only express emotion on video. So think about it, guys. It's like, if you're an agent thing, if you should get on video, here's how you determine it. Because people probably ask ROI. It's number one question again. First, you'll never figure that out. There's no formula for it. Uh, um, same for branding. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's no formula for it. It's just, just know it few- works, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you just know it works, but you won't know why it's working. You'll never be able to determine, much like brand, like people won't be able to determine what they remembered about it but that they just came back to it, yes. right? And everyone always has that one thing, we call it, right? So what's your one thing that people remember? Video can become one of those one things because people are always like, oh, there's that agent that's always on video doing funny mm-hmm. shit on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that little persona is what becomes top of mind. So when you farm your relationships, you become highly referable, highly marketable. It doesn't make you a better agent. You just right. have more attention than your competitor. That's why... Everyone's always jealous about the top agent in their office. I'm like, dude, why? The guy just has more friends than you do at this moment. Yes. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's true. And he's and you know, I love what you said about just get getting that being very different on video, right? Being very different because what happens is they may not express to you exactly why they chose you, why they chose to talk to you or do business with you. But a lot of times you will hear nuggets from them. And what's interesting about that is they can all be so different. You know, we have know. People, we, you, exactly. Yeah. And right. what can appeal to one person may not appeal to the next person, but the overall collective of who you are and the presence that you have, whether it's helpful or hurtful, whether it's approachable or put offish, there's yep. a new word, um, <laughs> <laughs> all of those things, right. they know those things instinctually. Well, it's like 
apply the same concept to dating. Like you could be um, for all you single people out there, you could be at a bar and be like, Hmm, that girl's hot. You don't know why she's hot. And you look at another girl that someone else might think is hot. And you're like, I don't know why she's hot. You're attracted to different people for different reasons. Like some people you just naturally resonate with others. You don't. Um, And, you know, people always say you don't judge a book by its cover, but at first everyone does. Um, You know, so you have to um, take that into consideration and people are always trying to be someone they're not. In many cases, um, especially with inexperience, a lot of times like, oh, I have to put on a suit. I have to go out and do that. That's not what people choose anymore. Right. At least in real estate, like people just choose personable, um, I think, all the time. I mean, very rarely. I don't remember last time um, I've even heard of a deal of someone losing up to another brand unless it was like mm-hmm. a discount brokerage. Right. It's, it's always just because of you, the person. Right. It is. You know, NAR yeah. just, uh, what was it, six months ago? They put out a, a study and it was 90, it's like 93% people admitted they didn't care who the brokerage was. Yeah. They did the business with the agent, you know, uh, yeah. because they already knew them. And you, and you hit on those points, like uh, two things that I really liked about what you said too, is the layering. You like, you still like direct mail. Of course we like direct mail. We like handwritten notes. You know, that's what branding is all about. Infusing those elements onto other forms of yes. contact with these people. And you do have to layer it. You know, you know, seven, 11, 21 rules of marketing have always been around. They always will be around. We still have to adhere to those now with video and we know the growth of video uh, is so much better. And like you said, you get, it's a great leader. It's a great uh, opener for you. And in, and then when you follow up those other forms of branding, then uh, you're going to see your business so continue to grow. Let's, let's play that out. It's like when you guys establish a brand, you guys basically create an endless amount of excuses to touch their database that a memorable excuse to touch their database. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you guys will create um, this based on your brand. This is a type of client party you can have. Right. Based upon this, based upon your brand, this is the type of closing gift you should get. This is what you should do at stage one in the transaction. Here's what you should do on stage two, because you guys are creating, you can't create an experience without first creating a brand. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Mm -hmm. it's no differently with video. You cannot create a video strategy without first identifying your brand. Mm -hmm. Because what the hell are you talking about? If not, you're just checking a box. So when you play this out in context for video series, the reason why I like creating a show is because the show will dictate and determine what and how you create. Mm-hmm. So let's do a little role play. You guys want to pick a pick a random brand and let's attach a video series to it. Pick one of your clients per se or, what's, or anything that like you could think of. And then okay. we'll say, how do you create a video series based upon that? And I think people would understand that a lot easier. That'd be awesome. Okay. Because right. we're doing well, stories. This is storytelling. See? I love it works. Right. We'll tell I'm going to close all of you guys right now. That's it. Okay, I'll give you one that's quite lifestyle driven. It's it's one of our um, trademarked brands. It's called Lifestyle Locator. That is what we call a brand identifier. And again, it doesn't tell you the entire story of the person. That's where you have to build the brand around what you're known for. So Lifestyle Locator is uh, an agent who is uh, is really into the lifestyle and knows that lifestyle super well and wants to help somebody locate that lifestyle sell or market the lifestyle that's going to help Mm. them sell their house to somebody looking for that lifestyle. Now, um, I'll give you an example of one of them is in Whistler, British Columbia. She is uh, in a market that I think the average home price there is about 1.7 million. It's all built around outdoor sports of cycling, running, uh, downhill skiing. They have lots of ski resorts in that area. So it's all about this active lifestyle. And so uh, go from there, Mike. Okay, I would name the name of the series would be called Locate This and the attention getters for every video would always be a teaser tour towards it, almost like a did you know, and then at the end you would reveal where that is located at. So it'd be perfect. So like Locate This would be an example. So give me an example, a ski resort maybe? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. So I'll say you're, I'm doing a ski resort. About the name of a ski yeah. resort? I don't know any names. I'll just pick one. There. So we'll just say I'm doing a video on a ski resort. Okay. So now that I, if the name of the series was Locate This and she's trying to build up her brand, So when you build a video series, we need to create content that enforces or enhances it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's just like, if you, people always hear the term, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most, right? Right, Well, your brand is an average of the videos you create. So if you want to be known as the locator, and that's a good name because I'm branding the name here, I would definitely call, have a series called locate this or something of that nature. And then I would tease it. Like imagine all the social content you have. Hey, do you know where this is at in this community? 
like imagine the engagement of the social just coming out just for that theme. But you would create locate. This would be on the things that most people that even live there don't really realize and or know about. So it's an educational based series based upon that and the community driven. So locate this, locate this would be like, say, let's say the ski hill. This is the highest point in all of British Columbia. Chuck, that's the cut. Hey, welcome to locate this. Where we're at today is we're on the location, but we're 7,055, four feet above the location of sea level. And we're going to give you a tour of one of British Columbia's most secret destinations. And the reason why it's a secret destination is because you have to be a member to go skiing here. Well, on this week's episode of locate this, we're going to show you exactly how to get access to it. Cut. You could go on and on, but it would love the, it. Love it. The theme would be super simple to carry out because it, you just have, see, you have an excuse to create content, just like you have an excuse to personify and personalize your brand. And then love that it. makes an excuse for a conversation. Yes. Which, as you said, is the key to all sales, right? We, we have to have the conversations. Chase conversations. The conversations. Don't you got, I go content creates engagement. Engagement creates the conversations. Conversations creates trust. Trust leads to you either getting referred or hired eventually. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I love all that. That I love the creativity with that. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a girl. Here's a good one. This girl came on. uh, I don't know if she listens to your show or not. Her name's Cindy Peak. So um, she comes on. She just did a demo with me. And I'm like, your last name's Peak. I'm like, Jesus. It's the name of your show is called Sneak Peek. Like I'm done, over, drop the mic. <laughs> like, I love it. It's perfect because that's like a perfect real estate show. Take a sneak peek of this, sneak peek of that behind the scenes. Like you can't get, that's like the perfect brand name for a show. Right. Um, crazy. But everyone has one of those. That's a fun part. So yeah, that's that is. True. And that's what we love the most about what we do also is that, you know, and, and we want to be clear. Everybody knows that you, everybody has their point of differentiation. It's just most people won't stop and think about it and what it needs to be. And then, and then the other half of the people get overwhelmed with how many points and rather than yep. focusing on one. Those are the two things we battle the most. That's the true. one thing is all is the um, best book I read. I read. I think Gary Keller wrote that book, The One Thing. Right. Um, but it makes a lot of sense. Like I learned a lot from reading that, that mm-hmm. book. But your brand is no different. It's one thing. It is. My, my grandpa is. always said the, the most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. <laughs> uh, you know, so let's make Pretty sure simple. that we reiterate it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what's interesting about that, it can be something very simple, right? But you need to do the homework and do the deep dive before you know what that is, because you also got to know if that's going to be unique and and compelling to the ideal customer you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about saying, oh, well, this is the name of my show, that's awesome. You know that because you do the deep dive with some of your clients too, and with all of your clients. And so you're looking at, you know, who it is that you're trying to attract and what are the things that set you apart? What's the one thing, right? And that's what it's based upon. And I think a lot of people forget the depth of a brand. Because what's really cool about it is why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. People want to know that. This is very interesting to people. Why? And that why plays into so much more content. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll get burnt out without doing it because everyone does. That's why the failure rate's so high. It's Mm -hmm. hard to just sell all the time. Um, Right. I hate it. (laughs) I can't do it. Uh, But I feel most most people are the same way. Like no one wants to go out there and be like, knocking on doors like this isn't i forgot the vacuum cleaner they used to go door to door fuller um or whatever those brushes were fuller brushes back in the 50s they used to go door to door and that's how sales used to be but today um oh yeah that's your batch your pass right yes. yeah, that's yeah. My yeah. Pass. So was, nobody was, nobody wants to do that anymore god i didn't um, want to do it then. she didn't want to do it then <laughs> it's that was the only Zig way. Ziglar but... didn't want to sell pots and pans either. That's why no. he got into motivational speaking. No, was it Brian Tracy? Is he, he the one that sold soap? Early I think on? So. I, yeah. I sold I sold soap in the uh I sold soap in college. Mm-hmm. He used to call me Suds. That was my nickname. Suds. Well, so you yeah. had branding you, you had did, branding down even you, back then, right? Like you're soaked in it. You, know, I love you gotta it. have it. You gotta have it. Yeah, I had reason. uh I created my own label back then and sold soap. Yeah. So I got through college. Yeah, love it. Yeah, you know. I do love it. Right. Well, what are some of the, how about some of the common mistakes that people make in video? Uh, You know, uh, what do you see the most? 
Um, overthink it um, in all aspects from the equipment um, mm -hmm. over to the actual like script and the first one. Like, and, yeah, I can't time in people. Like, and yeah, like that. it doesn't. If you were even if you had the perfect video, it would be horrible because the best videos aren't perfect. They're authentic. Mm -hmm. So you're not you got to remember that you're not trying to create Steven Spielberg quality um, videos each and every time. And like you look like that every day. So get over yourself. Um, you're Shoot not that more important. like Rob yeah. Zombie type of stuff. Yeah, and I, it's not that I'm being I don't mean to be an ass, but you're not that important. People don't think about you that much. Right. That's so sure. don't over don't overthink it at the same time. Like, do you, right. would you get mad at seeing someone's video? Like, I love when women do videos and they don't have the makeup on yet. That's like my favorite script for for any woman because they get the most comments. Why is that? Because of authenticity. Yeah, right. They're not afraid right? to not afraid to go out there. Are. You see it all the time. Anytime anyone makes like a real emotional post, um, you see people come out and like fight from the, you know, out of the woodworks for you. And that's what happens when you just pour it out there on video too. Like, yeah, you're going to have some people don't like you, but who gives a shit? Yeah. Right. Those people don't like anybody else either. So it's, yeah. you're not alone. They're not yeah. going to like you anyway. You got friends even in that. They'll find any reason not to yeah. like you. Because, so. you know, if you like, we belong to a lot of forums, a lot of groups, right? That we are uh, moderators for and helping, especially real estate agents, entrepreneurs in all kinds of fashions. But, you know, the, the post that we see that gets the most engagement is that new guy. It's like, hey, I got my first listing. Now what do I do? Right. And yeah. then, like, you see that the, the <laughs> 2,000 people have followed this. And they're all like laughing and stuff like because they know what it's like. They've been there. Yeah. They're, oh, they're yeah. like, well, I didn't know what to do either. You know what I mean? So it's true. It's yeah. uh, it's real. It's uh, it's a lot more authentic than, uh, yep. you know, what do you think is the number one thing that holds people back from doing video? Not knowing, not dialing in the same reason um, that holds them back from talking about what they do for a living is identifying their brand from marketing so not, at all. Yeah. Just not, just not knowing how to present themselves. I think for, um, and it's not just real estate agents, it's any referral personal business base. It could be a trainer, um, an attorney, even, um, they all it's any referral based business is built off your personal brand nowadays. Um, Agreed. and oh, it's good. the people like, don't realize that they are the brand though. And that's the hardest part is to differentiate the individuality from the actual business. So mm -hmm. the way I always tell people to do that is like, well, let's just pretend it's like a retail storefront. Like if you and I created a retail storefront that we're banging the drum all day, screaming about where the retail storefront is. Right. And we're just people aren't scared. If you open up for a restaurant, come eat at my restaurant. We got new drinks like people aren't scared to talk about that. Right. But when they open a business that's based upon their own personality, they are because the shot light, the spot, the spotlights on them. But that's the entire reason why you build a brand and identify it. Yes, because yeah. it's very hard. Otherwise, you're you know, I, I say all the time you, you cannot without identifying your brand, all of your marketing is just another salesperson chasing the next check because mm -hmm. you're not telling any story mm -hmm. and you exactly. can't market without storytelling. So right. all you're all, all you're doing is advertising, which means you're just a salesperson. Nothing wrong with that. If that's how you like to roll, great. But we're saying a brand is a lot different. You can't attract without first establishing one. And if you're like the concept of attracting business and having it come to you down the road, it doesn't happen overnight. Then you have to go the route we're talking about right here. I don't know another way to get there. I don't think anyone else does either. I don't think there is another way. No, and it's no. definitely the way that she taught me. And we continue to do to this day, like it, because it works. And like, this is, these are the steps that you're supposed to do. What, what do you think is the, um, is like, is there a perfect video length? Uh, what's in your opinion? Does it matter? Um, it, it no, because engaging? it's a good question. There's um, we have like 15 to 20 different styles of videos we do, and there's different pros and cons associated with all those different videos. Mm -hmm. So based upon what that is, the length of the video will um, differ. So um, you have a lot of people that are doing YouTube series now because they're attracting reloads uh, from YouTube, um, which is great. For, for, it's a lead generation on YouTube. It's all traction. Sure. But um, those videos could be four to 10 minutes long, but I could have another video that could only be three minutes long, you know, so it depends on what the pros and cons um, you're doing. A good mix is the best way to go. Well, we, regardless, it's uh, the way I look at it is every video, regardless of what you're doing, needs to be multi-purpose. So it's how you distribute the video is probably the biggest mistake. I see a lot of people do videos and just post them on their YouTube channel and they won't share that same video over to social. It's like, bro, you got nurture, your, get the most mileage out of this thing. So right, right. our concept is really simple. You create and you distribute, but you, you distribute always. 
So every video that we create, you want to video email it out to your database. You want to post it to all your social profiles. I like running ads to all those videos to get more eyeballs. Then I put it on YouTube and I also put the video back on your site. You want to multi-purpose because as you create, you know, 10 months down the road, you have 20 pieces of content. That's when you become that popular agent that you're seeking to today. Why does that agent have, you know, think about it. Two websites are side by side. Here's a good example someone told me once. Um, two websites side by side, say they're dentists. One website is your typical GoDaddy website. That's a dentist. It looks totally boilerplate. There's a GoDaddy, you're like, dentist is there. You're like, oh, it's a fake stock footage. Right. The next website is a WordPress. And on that WordPress, you have a video on every page. You could see the staff. There's a bunch of testimonials. You actually meet the dentist. He's there. Who the hell are you going to choose? Right. Right. Totally. So like the videos aren't where people mistake is they just let them die in a newsfeed and they're like, oh shit, it didn't work. It's like, well, dude, you're also creating the contents half the battle. You got to distribute it. It's the other half. Mm -hmm. And then you got to stay out consistent. Some will do well. Some won't do well. It doesn't matter. You just keep on going because yeah. who cares? It's you exactly. have to, if you stop farming your neighborhood for two months, you just fuck that up too. So quit messing up your personal brand. If you're gonna get on video, commit consistently and do it over time. And I have yet to see it not work on somebody. And I say that with 100% sincerity. Yep. Um, I can back I, it also. Yeah. It, it's, it, yeah. I've yet to see it not work. The only time it doesn't work is if people don't like you. That's the honest to God truth. And at least mm -hmm. you're get out of this business before wasting your time. But yeah. if you're in this, <laughs> if you're there and you're already transacting, all you're doing is enhancing that. All right, man, this is such good stuff. Listen, Michael, we're going to ask you uh, five important questions uh, about your personal brand that, uh, that we know there's five questions the brand needs to, to answer. So here's the first okay. one. Uh, for you specifically, what sets you apart from others in your industry? Um, well, right now we create, a, we create, edit, distribute. So we don't have many people against us in our industry. If I had to pick, I'm going to say my dudeness. Um, no one else is a dude. And that's going to be the only thing that you guys remember. So dude, dude, dude. I love it. Yep. Okay. Number two, exactly who do you serve? I serve. Well, this is like a trick question. This is exactly whom do you serve? I serve anyone within the real estate industry that is looking to build their personal brand with video content. Perfect. How do you serve them? We provide resources, education, training, and or services to either do it all for you or teach you how to do it yourself. Number four, what qualifies you to serve them? I've been there, done that. View my website for reference because I've created all the content. I also blogged it, distributed it. And checked it all out so that you guys can do the exact same thing because everything we do as a business, we do for our clients. Love that. And number five, how does it make their life better? Um, well, we just make you more popular. So if you like more business and you become more popular, then you start attracting more deals. So usually it makes your life more better because you're going to attract clients with it. Um, that's the whole idea. Well, we go. Five for five, nice ladies job. and gentlemen. Nice job, a well-defined That's why he's the real estate marketing dude. <laughs> was, right. that, was that like a trick question dude. to see if I get those right? And I did I, did I pass? I did good? Oh, we already yeah, knew you you'd did. get them right. We All right, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Talk about you. All right. So what's next for you, Mike? Um, No, we're going to keep building a real estate marketing dude brand. I got a couple other businesses we're working on launching that are um, just there. Uh, we have a software called Sweet Assist, which is a brokerage transaction management software tool that is uh, now on market. And we're building that and building our subscriber base. So um, just keep on going, you know, um, consistent uh, consistency. So same thing I'm talking about here. I'm going to go shoot videos and just keep on building. So just do it. I, I really like what you said that you do as a business, what you teach everybody else to do. And exactly. that is what we do also. And that's, that is the thing. Like it is 100% folks uh, from the heart and authentic because that's how he's building his business, right? By doing the very things that he teaches, this works, go do it. And uh, so uh, well, this is very important. How can prospects reach you if they have questions or they want to work with you? Sure, I appreciate that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you want to see sort of more on how we roll, it's uh, www.realestatemarketingdude.com, realestatemarketingdude.com. There's a ton of education on the site. Go ahead and read through the blog, check out the podcast, and um, you'll know if you want to reach out to us or not. Um, so I'll just start following you around everywhere. So um, that's about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, if you want to help with video, we'd love to help you. We'd love to serve you.
There you go. There you go. And and I recommend, I've seen several of their videos, but one of them that I really liked a lot that I think every agent needs to see is the eight types of videos um, that's on your YouTube channel. So check that out, guys, the eight types of videos. That'll get you a nice start, but it, you got to you gotta know the road you're on. You got to know the path. If you don't know the path, call this guy, okay? Hey, you know, I want to say this right now to all you guys about why you ought to reach out to him. You know, we were on a podcast the other day, uh, Brian, I uh, wish I could think of his last name because I want to give him this quote, no, I'm stumped. but he told everybody, he said, uh, you know, I tell everybody, uh, find the who, don't be the how. And that's what this is right here. Oh, that He's was already... EA? Was that EA? No, it wasn't okay. EA. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. I know it was Brian. We'll think of his last name. But anyway, they. Uh, the, I love that quote because it's so true. Right? You know, um, this real estate marketing dude has already blazed the path. Just go to him and hire him and work with him. There appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me too. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Thank you. So if you guys learned something today that helps you or inspires you, we encourage you to like it, love it, share it, and ding, subscribe so you can be the first to learn about the next episode. That's right, guys. Hey, listen, we do it for prosperity. And when we say prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about the full 360 of an abundant life that we truly wish for every one of y'all. We know at Brand Face that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be, be bold. bold, especially with your brand and especially in 2022. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Thank All you, right. Ms. Tony. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you next time on Be Bold Branding. Thrive Real Estate Education is a proud sponsor of Be Bold Branding. Thrive is the only online free continuing education school in the country. To find out if they're participating in your home state, go to alwaysfreece.com. All courses are approved and certified by the Real Estate Commission.